What's better for reducing PCOS symptoms? Nutrition, cardio, strength training. Most people are looking at studies that say strength training helps decrease the symptoms of PCOS. Strength training in every study has shown to increase the levels of sex hormone binding globulin. That is a glycoprotein that helps reduce the amount of testosterone entering the cells. However, what they're forgetting is that in every single one of those studies, it is also shown that because of the increase in lean muscle mass, you get an increase in a androgen called androstenedione. When you have a rise in androstenedione, or any other androgen, that stimulates 5-alpha reductase activity, which converts testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. That increases the effects of PCOS. So yes, while strength training does have its benefits, you also have to weigh the options. The question is what causes the increase in androgen levels to begin with? It boils down to insulin and the amount floating around in the bloodstream. Elevated levels of insulin increase the amount of estrogens that the ovaries produce, and it also decreases the amount of sex hormone binding globulin. The root cause of elevated insulin in your system is typically nutrition. This is one of the primary reasons I put most of my women that have PCOS onto a ketogenic nutrition plan. A ketogenic nutrition plan has been shown to reduce insulin sensitivity. A 2005 study had five women complete a study. It was all about a ketogenic nutrition plan and PCOS. What they found was absolutely incredible. 24 weeks on the study, unlimited amounts of meats and proteins, unlimited amounts of cheeses, which I don't think is extremely healthy for the keto diet. The way I do it, I put a lot of veggies, I take out a lot of the saturated fats. The point being, this study was true keto. At the end of the study, the mean free testosterone drop was 30%. The ratio of luteinizing hormone to follicle stimulating hormone dropped from 2.2 to 1.2, putting all these women back into the healthy range. Fasting insulin levels dropped by 54% on the mean. And what's even more interesting is that two of the five women who previously reported infertility problems became pregnant on the study. Now, while this is a small study, it is significant because of the surmounting evidence of how the ketogenic nutrition plan has tons of other benefits, including reducing insulin resistance, including normalizing A1C, and helping to normalize blood sugar, also decreasing overall body fat. The issue with PCOS is that everyone is trying to reduce BMI or change the body composition. How else can we improve body composition? reducing body fat. To do that, a 2012 Duke University study proved that aerobic exercise is four times more beneficial at burning body fat than strength training. The key here is that aerobic activity helps to reduce insulin levels. Remember, elevated insulin levels is what was causing the increase in the androgen production from the ovaries. So now the question is, which of these three options is better? Is it nutrition, is it cardio, or is it strength training? The answer, is neither. It's the combination of all three. We have to target nutrition first, that's 80% of the game. Then you couple that with cardio, which decreases insulin. It also reduces body fat. It also helps to regulate the hunger hormone release. You couple that with strength training a few times a week and you get the increase in sex hormone binding globulin. The three combined is the trifecta for the reduction of PCOS symptoms. And that is my default recommendation for every woman that I coach that comes to me with PCOS. And that trifecta is the reason that every one of my women with PCOS sees an alleviation in their symptoms and they get the results they want.